We physicists have waited a hundred years since 1916 for this photograph. The James Webb Space Telescope has made headlines across the world because it is capturing some of the most exquisitely detailed images of the cosmos ever observed by human eyes. The latest photos of the cosmos captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, are breathtakingly amazing to anybody who views them. However, they are also very unexpected and contrary to the theoretical predictions of most expert astronomers and cosmologists. With the James Webb Space Telescopes looking back in time, we found a startling discovery that calls into question our current model of the cosmos. So, what is it that the James Webb Telescope has uncovered that has shocked everyone? Let's find out. There is no random distribution of galaxies in the universe. In addition to clustering, they come together to form enormous interconnected filamentary formations with enormous void-like spaces in between. Galaxies are organized in groupings, then clusters, and finally along the filaments of the cosmic web on progressively larger spatial scales. These cosmic webs, which have captivated scientists for years, provide a look into the creation and evolution of the cosmos. Now, images from the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, show a remarkable configuration of galaxies that were there only 830 million years after the Big Bang. Our comprehension has recently advanced as a result of these observations. Astronomers are looking into the past when they gaze into the farthest reaches of the night sky. When the universe was 1 16th of its current age, in August 2022, JWST aimed toward the constellation Fornax, also known as the Furnace, and collected light from galaxies. By analyzing this data, astronomers found an ancient branch of the cosmic web, the universe's grand structure. Like pearls on an antique necklace, the ancient galaxies are strung along a single, enormous cosmic thread. The Aspire Project, a spectroscopic survey of biased halos in the reionization era, whose major objective is to investigate the cosmic settings of the first black holes, published this result. 25 quasars from the epoch of reionization, the first billion years following the Big Bang, will be observed by the initiative. They discovered a thread-like structure of 10 galaxies during their search that had been around for only 830 million years after the Big Bang. The 3 million light-year long structure is anchored by a bright quasar, and the astronomers were surprised by its shape. I was surprised by how long and how narrow this filament is, said team member Xiaohui Fan of the University of Arizona in Tucson. I expected to find something, but I didn't expect such a long, distinctly thin structure. The team predicts that this filament will grow into a galaxy cluster that is comparable in size to our own galaxy's famed Coma Cluster. The researchers also studied the filamentary architecture of eight quasars from the early universe by examining their properties. The researchers determined that these galaxies were less than a billion years old and that their central black holes had masses ranging from 600 million to 2 billion times that of the Sun. These findings provide scientists with more motivation to look into the prospect of rapid black hole formation. For such massive black holes to emerge in such a short period of time, two requirements must be fulfilled. It takes a big seed black hole for the expansion to start. Second, even if this seed initially had the mass of a million suns, it will still need to acquiesce an enormous amount of matter over the course of its existence. These groundbreaking observations are offering critical hints about how black holes are created. We now know that these black holes are found in large, young galaxies that serve as a source of fuel for their expansion, according to Jinyi Yang of the University of Arizona, who is leading the Aspire study on black holes. We now know that the main sources of fuel for these black holes are very massive, very young galaxies. JWST data also revealed evidence of a potential role for early supermassive black holes in controlling the star formation in their host galaxies. These black holes create enormous outflows, or winds, as they take in matter. These winds have an impact on galactic-scale processes like star formation that extend far beyond the black hole's immediate vicinity. Black holes' powerful winds can prevent stars in the host galaxy from forming. Although these winds have been indirectly spotted in adjacent galaxies, they have never been directly observed during the reionization epoch. The quasar structure is correlated with the wind size. We can see from the web measurements that such winds were there in the early universe. 
JWST authorities released an image of the patch of sky that JWST's NERCAM, near-infrared camera, scanned. Just 830 million years after the Big Bang, these galaxies were already in existence. They are clustered along a filament that is 3 million light years long. It is a piece of the vast, web-like structure that connects galaxies while also separating them by massive voids. A galaxy shines brightly in the center of the group of three circles on the right side of the image as its central supermassive black hole whirls matter around outside its flanks. This activity has the effect of making it glow very brightly. Quasars are active in things like this. This quasar anchors the filament, according to NASA. Even though JWS has only been in operation for a year, it has already provided a wealth of information about the cosmos. The mysteries of the cosmic web will keep being revealed if further filaments similar to this one are found. In addition, the moon of Saturn was seen squirting. The James Webb Space Telescope captured one of Saturn's strangest and most fascinating moons, which is blowing a massive plume of water vapor thousands of kilometers away from its icy surface. These kinds of outbursts are nothing new for Enceladus, Saturn's tiny, watery moon, according to NASA. However, a plume of this size had never been recorded before the JWST focused its incredibly sensitive scientific sensors on it. Enceladus is remarkably small, measuring only 313 miles wide when completely submerged in water, which is how it increasingly appears to be. This makes it only 4% the size of our planet. The surprise at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, then, may be imagined when they discovered a plume blasting from it that was more than 6,000 miles in length, dwarfing the little moon and covering the distance, as noted by NASA, between Los Angeles and Buenos Aires. Goddard's Geronimo Villanueva is the primary author of recent research on the previously unreported occurrence that was published. When I was looking at the data, at first, I was thinking I had to be wrong, he stated. The discovery of a water plume that was more than 20 times the size of the moon was just so shocking. The rate of the plume, which Webb was able to determine to be rushing out at a staggering 79 gallons per second, was also of significant interest to the researchers. Although there is only a little amount of coverage over 6,000 miles, NASA says that there is still enough coverage to fill an Olympic-sized pool in a few hours. Enceladus is a significant object because, as NASA found back in 2021, its distinctive hydrothermal vents, very likely, contain bacteria similar to those on Earth, making it one of the solar system's most notable prospective habitats for extraterrestrial life. The agency's Cassini mission, the first to orbit Saturn, gathered reams of information about the famously ringed planet and discovered that the plumes Enceladus sends forth have the proper components for the building blocks of life. It's not surprising that NASA is so interested in exploring this moon, and there's no denying that the discovery of this enormous water spout was a welcome surprise. On the other hand, the James Webb Space Telescope recently began its first near-infrared studies of the renowned ringed planet Saturn. Researchers are immediately enthralled by the early imagery from Webb's near-infrared camera. Since methane gas absorbs practically all of the sunlight that strikes the atmosphere, Saturn itself appears to be exceedingly dark at the infrared wavelength seen by the telescope. The strange appearance of Saturn in the Webb image is due to the fact that the ice rings continue to be relatively bright. The Webb Guaranteed Time Observation Program 1247 was used to get this image. Several extremely long exposures of Saturn were included in the program in order to test the telescope's ability to pick up faint moons orbiting the planet and its brilliant rings. Any newly discovered moons might aid in the construction of a more complete picture of Saturn's history and present systems. The planet's rings, as well as some of its moons, including Tethys, Dione, and Enceladus, are vividly seen in this new view of Saturn. The scientists will be able to study some of the planet's fainter rings, which are not visible in this image, such as the narrow G ring and the diffuse E ring, with the help of additional deeper exposures. The various rocky and icy fragments that make up Saturn's rings range in size from less than a grain of sand to a couple that are as big as mountains on Earth. Recent exploration of Enceladus by the Webb spacecraft revealed a massive plume that jets out of the southern pole of the Moon and feeds Saturn's E-ring. This plume comprises both particles and a lot of water vapor. The detail of Saturn's atmosphere is likewise unexpected and astonishing. 
This is the first time that the planet's atmosphere has been viewed with this clarity at this particular wavelength, 3.23 microns, which is unique to Webb, even though the Cassini probe examined the atmosphere with more clarity. The distinctive stripe pattern that is often visible from Saturn's deeper atmospheric layers is not present in this view because the vast, dark, diffuse structures in the northern hemisphere do not follow the lines of the latitude of the planet. In the stratospheric aerosols high above the primary clouds, the patchiness is evocative of large-scale planetary waves, which may be akin to those observed in the first Webb-NERCOM observations of Jupiter. The differences in appearance between the planet's northern and southern poles in this image are reminiscent of known seasonal fluctuations on Saturn. For instance, Saturn's northern hemisphere is currently in the height of summer, while the southern hemisphere is emerging from the depths of winter. However, the northern pole is exceptionally dark, maybe as a result of an unidentified seasonal phenomenon that specifically affects polar aerosols. Spectroscopy from Webb could help confirm that a faint suggestion of brightening at the edge of Saturn's disk may be caused by high-altitude methane fluorescence, the process of producing light after absorbing light, emission from the trihydrogen ion in the ionosphere, or both. For many years, missions like NASA's Pioneer 11, Voyagers 1 and 2, Cassini, and the Hubble Space Telescope have been monitoring Saturn's atmosphere and rings. These web observations only scratch the surface of what this observatory will eventually contribute to our understanding of Saturn when the science team goes into the data to prepare peer-reviewed findings. In addition, the rocky exoplanet TRAPPIST-1c, which is around 40 light-years away in the TRAPPIST-1 star system, has recently come into sharp focus for the James Webb Space Telescope. However, before you get too excited, it is highly improbable that the planet can support alien life, much less serve as a new home for humans. According to a recently released study, TRAPPIST-1c is incredibly hostile. The findings are consistent with the planet either being a naked rock with no atmosphere or having an extremely thin CO2 atmosphere with no clouds, far thinner than that of Earth or even Mars. The most prevalent kind of star in our galaxy, TRAPPIST-1, is a red dwarf. The more we learn about the planets that revolve around them, the more knowledge we have regarding the likelihood that life could exist on these stars. But in this instance, it seems very unlikely that there might be life on TRAPPIST-1c. The researchers determined how much radiation the planet receives from its home star by analyzing data obtained by James Webb's mid-infrared instrument, which allowed them to determine how hot the rocky exoplanet is. Additionally, TRAPPIST-1c looks to have almost no atmosphere at all making it uninhabitable for life as we know it with a predicted daytime surface temperature of about 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Given the stark differences between the rocky planet and those in our own solar system, the researchers were taken aback by those findings. Because TRAPPIST-1c is essentially a Venus twin and receives radiation from its host star at a level comparable to that of Venus from the Sun, it is an intriguing object. Scientists hypothesize that it might have a dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide similar to Venus. The fact that we can measure this kind of information at all is still rather amazing, and further discoveries are almost certainly on the way. In addition, some of the earliest galaxies ever seen have been revealed in a groundbreaking study carried out by the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, dating back to the first 650 million years after the Big Bang. The JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, JADES, according to a publication in Nature, concentrated on a number of night sky locations and found 717 galaxies at extraordinarily far redshifts, providing insight into the early origin and evolution of stars and galaxies in the universe. These ancient galaxies, which appear as they appeared within the first 650 million years of the Big Bang, were observed by the telescope using infrared technology, opening up hitherto unattainable windows into the early cosmic past. The hazy red blob known as Jade's GSZ-130 is the universe's farthest remote object ever found. It was discovered by the JWST in late 2017 and is located at a redshift of 13.2, which is similar to its state barely 320 million years after the Big Bang. This galaxy, despite being small, confounds astronomers by creating stars at a rate comparable to the Milky Way, disproving earlier theories about the gradual development of early galaxies. With the help of JWST observations, 
we are learning how common these objects are throughout the cosmos and how important they are for the structure of the universe. Large, bulky galaxy. The clumpy structure of the bulbous galaxy, which is 300 million years older than the current record holder and has a redshift of 8, points to a period of intensive activity over those 300 million years. The early galaxy's importance in laying the foundation for all subsequent cosmic evolution is highlighted by JWSAT's discovery of these galaxies, which suggests that the universe's dynamic nature has been there from its very beginning. The Galaxy of Inside Out this galaxy, which was discovered 700 million years after the Big Bang, shows an unusual pattern where more stars are developing on its periphery than in its center. As it measures the inside-out evolution of a galaxy during an early stage of the universe, this discovery challenges accepted theories. Universe Rose A beautiful cluster of dusty crimson galaxies like a cosmic rose is found by the Jades team. These galaxies are the center of the cosmic noon when galaxies generated stars quickly and shaped the universe as we know it today. They are located at various distances correlating to redshifts ranging from 2.5 to 3.9. The finding underscores JWST's important contribution to understanding the redness of the universe and has special significance for scientists. More so, the James Webb Space Telescope of NASA is now receiving some company after gazing into the universe for a year and a half at a distance of about a million miles from the Earth. According to a statement, the space agency recently chose a toaster-sized CubeSat to serve as the tiny, endearing sidekick of the much larger telescope. NASA selected the monitoring activity from nearby stars with UV imaging and spectroscopy, Mantis Space Project, which will cost $8.5 million and be developed by experts at the University of Colorado Boulder. The tiny but powerful spacecraft, whose launch is planned for some time in 2026, will observe the night sky using all ultraviolet light, including the more intense extreme ultraviolet, EUV light. In addition to Webb's own investigations of exoplanets, the CubeSat will use these findings to study stars that are hundreds of light years from our planet. Mantis will blend in seamlessly and fill in the gaps left by its much larger cousin. According to Kevin France, an associate professor at the University of Colorado Boulder and member of the Mantis team, we proposed Mantis as a kind of ultraviolet sidekick that will follow JWS and look wherever it is looking, filling in this important piece of context on the stellar environments in which these planets live. As they are bombarded by radiation from their host star, planets frequently emit enormous levels of EUV, which is a warning that they may be losing their atmosphere. However, detecting this radiation burst has proven to be challenging, which is where Mantis comes in. According to David Wilson, who heads the mission's research team at the University of Colorado, for a lot of stars, this will be the first time we've seen what they look like in extreme ultraviolet, and as a result, we might catch a tantalizing peak at planets that might support life. The impact of this UV light flux from stars on planet atmospheres and potentially their habitability is a topic of interest for scientists. The discipline of cosmology, which is tasked with ascertaining the nature of the universe and how it came to be the way it is now, may experience significant advancements throughout the course of the ensuing decade. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.